What's up everybody, my name's Hugh Miller and holy cow, it's been again a while since I have last made a video. And that is, uh, it's, it's, it's no one's fault really. I keep saying I'm gonna do these videos and I just don't. I just don't have time, but I do have time and I just don't feel motivated, but sometimes I do and when I do, I'm not at home. Long story short, a bit of stuff's been going on here and there. Got a few videos coming out, um, probably just two at the moment. Uh, but yeah, anyways, Her Interactive has been, uh, if you are subscribed to the Her Interactive newsletter, um, then most likely you'll have gotten two emails from them over the last two days. They're, they're both fascinating emails. Fascinated! And I, we're gonna go over those emails right now. Uh, so for the first one, I actually think it's pretty cool. It goes, uh, f the title of it, the subject line is, find out what it's like behind the scenes of Midnight in Salem. And when I first got this, I was, here's a screenshot of it. I was very interested because I have never seen this like format of email from Her Interactive. Um, and when, the last time I did was usually just when they sent me an email when we were talking about other stuff or uh, when they asked me to beta test the Shattered Medallion six years ago. Is it that long? Jesus. Anyways, um, I haven't seen an email like this mass or mass sent out, I guess. Uh, ever and so I was my first thought was what's going on are they like uh, are they letting me personally see some fancy stuff but by the way it was like worded I didn't think so and then I checked another email of mine and uh, another email address that I've got and turns out it just got the same email so I was like oh, okay well in that case anyways um it's pretty cool. There's a link there uh, that the the blue text uh, says, see what, what it's like behind the scenes at Nancy Drew Midnight in Salem. Uh, it's pretty cool. They actually interviewed all the voice cast, uh, or most of the voice cast, I'll put it that way. And there's about 10 videos, just short like minute, minute and a half things. Uh, it, it is pretty cool, actually. It was, it, they're pretty cool videos. And they're awful, all, awful. Also offering 40% uh, off Midnight in Salem. They don't say until when, they just say for a limited time uh, using promo code MID2020. So if you want to get a physical copy, because they still have those in stock, quite a few thousand, I think. Um, and if you want, or if you just want to get a digital copy, MID2020, 40% off. There you go. Uh, yeah. That was the first email. All right. So let's hop over to the second email real quick. This email is one of the most fascinating emails I have ever gotten from Her Interactive. <laughs> It, uh, it is, it is fascinating. All right. So what they did was they put together a little, a little graph, I guess. A little, yeah, a bit of a graph. Um, and they're comparing Midnight in Salem to three arbitrary titles of theirs. I say arbitrary because I don't see any correlation between the three. Uh, they chose Ghost of Thornton Hall. Curse of Blackmore Manor and Sea of Darkness. And nothing about those really makes sense. It, it would have made more sense to me if they chose Sea of Darkness, Labyrinth of Lies, or, and Shadow Medallion, like the, the three most recent games or, you know, the fan favorite games, uh, TRT, Shaw, and Kerr. But they chose Goth, Kerr, and Sea. And nothing about that makes sense. What's really interesting is the overall style of the graphic. It's very unher interactive. The only thing I can compare it to is uh, back in 2012, when they were still beta testing uh, the Deadly Device, uh, Little Jackalope shared a slide from one of their um, Google, uh, not Google, what is it called? Microsoft PowerPoint, pow one of their PowerPoint slides. And um, from, my dog's getting up. Where are you going? Oh, she's lying on the floor. Um, anyway, so she shared one of the slides, and it looks, it looks very similar in style to this. Like this looks obviously like someone spent a bit of time working on it, but it there's no her interactive logo. Like for all I know, this might not even have come out of her interactive. Um, but it's fascinating. All right, we got the Nancy Drew game. Oh, let's just talk about the color as well. It's very similar to the colors, uh, one of the main colors that we use for uh, the Amelia Darnell series and Airtight Alibi Productions. It's very similar in color. So that's that's kind of interesting. Kind of the same general, general color scheme, I guess. And then in the top right, it says, liked the eerie curse. Sorry, let me read that, because that does, that's a, oh, no offense. No offense, Her Interactive, I really love you guys. That's a bad sentence. Liked the eerie curse of Blackmore Manor. That's a bit hard to say. 
uh, you may you may appreciate the similar similar vibe from Midnight in Salem. Hmm. All right. Liked the scares of ghost in Ghost of Thornton Hall. Be prepared to face ghosts and perilous escapes in Midnight in Salem, but they do nothing with Sea of Darkness. So why is Sea of Darkness on the the thing? I don't understand that. All right, so they got they've got Midnight in Salem, Ghost of Thorn Hall, Curse of Blackmore Manor, and Sea of Darkness all lined up here, and then they've broken down the games into six categories: puzzles, n uh, number characters, not number of characters, number characters, uh, environments, gameplay game play not gameplay uh inspection of objects that's a new term and story all right this is where things get fascinating fascinated okay puzzles uh midnight and salem just says new 3d and all the other games say 2d so new 3d that's a bit that's a weird term usage i guess um but they're not wrong all right because the puzzles in this game are 3d because the whole game is 3d uh, whereas all the other games were 2D puzzles, because the games were 2D. It's just as simple as that. This is where it starts to get interesting. Number of characters in Midnight in Salem, 14. So yeah, there's a lot of characters in Midnight in Salem. However, I would like to contest that there are multiple characters in Midnight in Salem, which are not necessary. For instance, Elizabeth Hurst. Damien What's-His-Face, who, spoilers, dates Tegan. Those two characters specifically are very unnecessary to the game and the story and everything. So I think there should be less than 14 characters, but that's my opinion. So let's move on to Ghost of Thorn Hall, Blackmore Manor, and Sea of Darkness. Now this is, this is interesting. In Ghost of Thorn Hall, they label that the game as having six characters. If you include all the physical and phone characters, there's nine. There's nine, right? There's, I don't, I, some, something weird's going on there, a bit spooky, actually, because they are evidently including phone characters in Midnight in Salem. So what's going on with Ghost of Thornton Hall, all right? Curse of Blackmore Manor, five characters. Well, let's take a look at how many characters are actually in the game. Again, five physical characters and multiple phone characters. I don't have the number with me because I was not prepared to make this video. I didn't look it up. I don't know how many phone characters there are. There's multiple phone characters. There's, there's more There's more than five characters in the game. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, let's look at Sea of Darkness. Again, the graphic says five characters. However, if you're including phone characters, there are seven. So, Unexplained. What's going on there? Something weird is happening there! <laughs> Let's move on to environments. This is interesting because they're, they're claiming that all of these games all have nine environments. This is a bit of a tough one to gauge because I don't know what they are and aren't qualifying as environments because I think I would qualify environments as something that's different than what they would qualify them as. So this is just interesting that they're they're highlighting the number of environments. If the number of environments is the same throughout all these games, according to them. Uh, hmm. Gameplay. Gameplay. Not gameplay, but gameplay. Interesting. All right. They're saying Midnight and Salem has five to seven hours. Originally, it took me six hours to beat uh, on my first playthrough. So they're not wrong. Uh, if you're, you know, gauging my playthrough personally. So they're not wrong, okay? I think Argo Fun was about six to eight hours as well. So, again, they're not wrong. Goes to Thorn Hall, four to six hours. Now, this is interesting, right? Because if we just, if we pull up, I actually don't have it prepared here. I should probably do that. Uh, if you pull up my, my walkthroughs for the next three games, all right, so Ghost of Thornton Hall has 19 videos, and each video is about about 10 minutes long, more or less by like a few seconds, right? And so that means that that's 190 minutes, which translates into hours to be just over three hours, all right? Um, and I still like sort of screwed around while I was playing the game. So, and there are speed records that are, or speed runs that are way faster than three hours, so... I think they're I think they're a little not much, just a little bit overzealous with that. Four to six hours is a bit much. 
Curse of Blackmore Manor, three to five hours. Again, that's that's pretty close. That's pretty close, okay? Uh, but again, here's what I'm interested in. Both Ghost of Thornton Hall and Curse of Blackmore Manor have fewer, like a, a shorter game span than uh, Midnight in Salem, yet Sea of Darkness has the longest one here for six to eight hours. Six to eight hours. Again, right? I got my walkthrough done in about two and a half hours. Six to eight hours. That, that something about this can't be right. I'm not sure again where they got that information from, but there's something not quite right there. Okay, now let's, let's look at the uh, inspection of objects section of the graph. Again, just like puzzles, it just says new 3D for Midnight in Salem, Ghost of Thorn Hall, Curse of Blackmore Manor, and Sea of Darkness. I'll just say 2D. What? Like, yeah, yeah, that's, I'd expect that from a 3D game. Um, yeah, sounds about right. Now this, this also is fascinating. Fascinated! Story, Midnight in Salem, multiple mysteries. Ghost of Thornton Hall, one mystery. Curse of Blackmore Manor, one mystery. Sea of Darkness, one mystery. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna say false on the last three. Midnight in Salem does have multiple mysteries. Uh, we're trying to figure out we figure out or the mystery of uh, what happened to May's face, the mystery of who burned down um, the Hawthorne house, uh, the mystery of pretty much any character in the game because I'm just fascinated by each one. Uh, Ghost of Thornton Hall. There are there are significantly more than one mystery. We've got the general mystery of where's Jessalyn, but then we've got the mystery of what really happened uh, the night of the fire. Who actually burned down the house? That's I I don't know if I meant that to be a pun or not, but I said it. And then we've got the mystery of why didn't Savannah come out to uh, to investigate instead, and why did she send Nancy? And those are just a, just to name a few, right? Curse of Blackmore Manor. There are multiple mysteries in this one. You got the whole mystery of the Penvillain history in general. There's tons of stuff in there. And then we've got what's happening with Linda. Why is she being so weird? And then the mystery of the Penvillain family treasure and the curse and the beast of Blackmore. That's four mysteries right there. The, not just one mystery. Sea of Darkness. What happened to Magnus? Right? That's one mystery. What's up with the treasure? That's another mystery. Like, it, it's not that hard to come up with multiple mysteries. Like, I, again, I just... I I just don't know what this graphic is supposed to do. I don't... I don't... Oh, it's just... It's just weird. It's just a weird graphic. I, I am just so interested in, uh... In this graphic. And the fact that they sent both these emails, like one after another so we had like the first email two days ago and then this email yesterday it's it's just interesting i don't know i i i'm just just a little bit interested and if someone from her interactive is watching this um if you guys have any answers to any of these questions that i have raised just let me know i don't know what's going on uh, and I'm sure tons of fans feel the same way because tons of fans have, have subscribed to the Her Interactive newsletter. And again, here's a picture, or here's an actual newsletter that they've sent out. They send them like every once a month, I think, or every Friday or something. I can't remember. Um, and this this style is just so far, so far, even in terms of font font usage. This is just not what her interactive has done ever i am just i am so interested in what is going on with this graphic and it probably isn't a big deal but it it's it, it interests me and i'd like some answers uh because it's just one of them it is just fascinating anyways thank you guys for watching this very long video i hope you guys enjoyed what do you guys think of all this do you agree or disagree with the graphic uh, are there parts you agree with and parts you disagree with? Disagree with? Are there... I shouldn't do that. That's just making fun of people with a lisp. Um, let me know. Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful rest of your day.